This episode was brought to you by Slate Black Industries. For M-Lock grips and accessories, visit slateblackindustries.com. Welcome back to Nine Hole Reviews. Glad to see that you're healthy. Or at least I hope you are. I'm talking to a camera, so I don't know if you are. But if you're not, then keep on fighting the good fight. We are still under COVID-19 lockdown. And we're still healthy. We still have food, we still have water, we're good. Spirits are still high, and this episode of Nine Hole Reviews is a little different. Well, if you saw the first two episodes of Operation Viking Jeep, you know what we're running into. But if you haven't, we're actually not shooting any firearms in this video. I know. What the f***? We know everybody's on lockdown. We know spirits may not be as high as ours. So I wanted to bring a series of episodes that I've done in the past. When I took my Jeep all the way from Southern Bavaria up to Iceland and some of the beautiful scenery and some of the cool things that I got to experience and I wanted to bring it to everybody in their living room during a time when we couldn't do much outside. If you haven't seen the first two episodes, highly recommend you watch it. But if you have, then you know what you're coming into. Anyways, without further ado, Operation Viking Jeep, episode three, commences now. Enjoy. Awesome. We're uh, headed out to what's that place called? Kirigurigurigurig. It was almost a 400 kilometer or a four hour drive from Reykjavik to Akareri. We drove most of it at night, so by the time we hit the northern coast, we were exhausted. Okay, so uh, it's about, uh, let's see, 2 a.m. in uh, Iceland. So the uh, pilot of the vehicle is out there taking a, a piss right now. You can see his shady ass there. Uh, notice in the background you've got uh, beautiful land of the, uh, you know, midnight sun, as they say. Uh, so, you know, it's just, uh, it's about 2 a.m. We're just waiting, uh, waiting for the sun to come up here, so. It's up ready, man. Yeah, see, it's coming up. It's coming up. Unfortunately, there's, uh, many miles to go before we sleep, as they say, but, uh. Ah, it's only another 100 kilometers. We've already gone, uh, about 200 tonight. Yeah, so. Yep. Guten Morgen. We made a stop in Blindos at the northern coast for the night's rest. Iceland is one of the world's northernmost countries. With that, they get almost 23 hours of daylight during the summer solstice. That means we had almost double the daylight to push onwards. Although this concentrated our time for daylight activities, it did not lend to good rest if you stayed in tent a lot. We finally reached Shakareli and stayed for the rest of the day. David and I found the Viking beer factory and then we ate some whale meat for the first time. We were both fond of seafood 
and we took every opportunity to feast on fish. Salmon was our daily staple. We had it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Sometimes we would even have it for snacks in the jeep. To keep our sustenance chilled, we would sometimes chip snow caps for a cooler. With that, we had delicious and nutritious food for every single meal when we were on Iceland. That is, until I got my hands on some whale blubber and dried herring. Hey, what you got there, David? Some uh, whale blubber. Mm. So uh, I noticed that you gagged a little bit. Yeah, this is a. Uh Faroe is an Icelandic delicacy, but uh, yeah, it's kind of uh, it's kind of hard to get down. So we'll give it another go. All at once. Mm. Mm. Are, are the f flavors mm. mixing? Oh yeah, quite nicely. Uh huh. Mm. Mm. Is it curing curing your hangover quite a bit? Oh yeah. Yeah, it's good. Ugh. As you continue to head east from Akareri, you will eventually meet the volcanic lakes of Maivata. These lakes were formed over 2300 years ago when a volcano erupted in the area. The islands you see on the lake are in fact formed by lava that was shot in the sky from these massive eruptions. These lakes are also where the green grass ends, right before we enter Europe's largest desert. A mere two kilometers east, and your scenery changes drastically. The remnants of Krabla volcano continues to put jets of steam from the groundwater till this day. Boiling mud pots, superheated steam fountains, and the arid hills greatly contrast against the lush green lakes that we just passed. Behind these mud pots, ancient cairns still stand. These cairns lead you along the trail eastbound. These stones are actually established as a national highway system since the first Vikings came to settle on the island. We followed them east. Of European countries, Iceland has the highest percentage of 4x4 SUVs per capita. And this number only rises through summer, when overland enthusiasts from mainland Europe flood the island. You rarely see Jeep Wranglers, especially the soft top ones. But Land Rover Defenders are a staple truck. You would never miss a Defender with its iconic safari look. And we indeed saw them all over the island. Belgian Army Pathfinder Dandy to drive his G4 Challenge Land Rover in relative comfort. Some will take older 4x4s out, like their 40 series Toyota Land Cruisers. Some have massive lifts and tires on newer Nissan Pathfinders. One Austrian guy chose to drive his military 6x6 Pingawa personnel carrier, while some others choose to tempt fate with their fuel efficient options. We met some guys from a French expedition group called Territoire du Nord. They like to ride their convoys out to deserted areas and run mini ATV tours. Some companies on Iceland even cater off-road adventures to large groups of tourists. Some people choose to build their custom all-terrain recreational vehicles. I was naturally curious of these big behemoths and decided to do more research.
One thing for certain was that when it came to search and rescue, the Icelandic mountain ranges did not skimp on their budget. For the next and final part of this series, we press onwards towards Askia. As we pull off of Highway 1, we see the familiar River Ford warning sign, and we wonder what we are being placed against. There is no looking back. We recall to the memories that we have already made, the places that we have already seen. And we get the bittersweet thought to facing the most stimulating, and yet the last part of our journey here on Iceland. There is no looking back. Seven one six, this is Bill Knight six, four Vic, eight pack, red con one, green to green, top copy over. Bill Knight six, this is seven one six, Roger over. One six, Bill Knight one, one pack, green green, over. This is seven one six, Roger over. One six, Bill Knight two, one Victor, two packs, red con one, over.